Back in the day, I had a company, Tricontinent. You've heard me talk about them already. We did a lot of work for this company. They were a medical company that actually made their own machines. So we did a lot of housings. We just did a lot of different plastic parts. Everything had to be absolutely perfect. And in this particular case, it was no different. In fact, Tricontinent came to us and they actually told us that all the shops in the region that they had tried had scrapped these parts. When I looked at the part, I was like, the part doesn't look that difficult. Why are they scrapping? And they were saying that they would actually test out the company. The company would give them some good parts, but consistently they would have more rejects than they would have good quality parts. And therefore they were wondering if we could actually solve that problem. I took on the job. I looked at it very carefully and instantly I realized what was going on but keep in mind all machinists are different based on how they look at a part and based on the process that they invent the custom process to actually machine that part from raw stock to finished part to hit that tolerance to make a perfect part so everybody's different and therefore I saw it different so when I looked at the part first thing I saw was you know a pretty small but decent size Delrin part. A lot of thin walls. When you go across the bottom of it, they were calling out 2000s flatness. Now 2000s flatness isn't that bad, but the entire inside of the part above that flatness gets hogged out. And then the bottom of the pocket is parallel within 1000s to datum A, which datum A is that surface with the 2000s flatness. And then when you go on the side of it, there's a motor that actually bolts up to the side. So that surface to datum A has to be perpendicular within 1000s and everything has to be perfect. Now, why is it difficult? It's difficult because when you start hogging material away from plastic, it's so soft, it wants to move on you. So to hit all of these tolerances, you have to have a master plan that is going to give you perfect parts every time. Now, instantly, knowing that everybody was scrapping these parts, I knew from experience that their stock when starting was oversized and they were clamping a portion in a jaw putting pressure they were hogging out the entire part hogging everything and then they were flipping it over and they were cutting off the bottom surface but the bottom surface was probably upwards of a quarter inch or more and therefore when you take that cut the part is forced to bow after analyzing the part and understanding the mistakes that others would have made on this part we created a different strategy. We actually created pallets and then we created grooves where the material will actually sit into a groove in the pallet instead of being in the vise by itself. Now here is a critical element to the design. We created 50 thousandths dovetails in the raw stock of the Delrin material that actually allowed it to slide into the grooves that also had matching dovetails. And therefore, as it slides in, it can't pull out. So we're taking the pressure off of the material. And because the dovetails are only 50 thousandths, when we flip it over to do the second op, we'll only have to deck off 50 thousandths, which doesn't put a lot of pressure on the part. So we would slide the Delrin pieces into the fixture. Boom, 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 four per fixture. We would clamp down on the Delrin, put it into a fourth axis so we can actually hog everything on the top plus do the side hole at the same time. We would rough everything within five thousandths. Then the machine would hit an M0, it would stop, and we would loosen the pressure on the clamp, just lightly touching it. And then we'd go in and do our finish passes. When our finish passes are being done, there's no pressure on that part. We've taken everything out. So we just kiss that baby right into tolerance. And then we take the fixture out of the machine. Now on the second operation, we only have to cut 50 thousandths off the bottom, deburr the part, and then it's finished. So what we did was we created a special soft jaw. The part just flipped over, slid right into the soft jaw. 
the fit was just like a glove. We put pressure on it and then we roughed off the bottom of the material, approximately 45 to 50 thousandths, leaving five thousandths. Then we open the jaw, gently reclamp with barely any torque, and then we come back and we just kiss that five thousandths right off, take the parts out, and the parts are absolutely perfect. We document the process, we document the torque specs, we document everything, and for years and years and years, we had no issues whatsoever. Now that is an example of a part that for many companies was an impossible part to run consistent and yet we were able to do it with the right technique. Now when you look at Inconel, yes, it is a hard material to machine. And if you don't have the right tools, you don't have the right specifications, the speeds, the fees, the depths of cuts, you will break those tools. It'll cost you a lot of money. You'll end up losing money. And many people start backtracking when that happens. Now, here's the difference. When you look at the plastic parts, yes, you can take the raw stock, you can take an end mill, a drill, pretty much anything, and shove it right through that material and cut it. But that's not what it's about. When it comes to tight tolerance to work, it's about cutting it absolutely perfect, hitting those thin walls and keeping tolerances and datums and true position dialed. And that is not an easy thing to do. And when it comes to Inconel, if you have the right tools, if you're using go drills, if you're using the Harvey 3, you're using the exact surface foot and chip load and depth of cut that we actually call out on our Aerospace Academy, aerospaceacademy.com, and you follow what we teach perfectly, you will be able to repeat that process over and over and over without a problem. The material is hard. You can clamp on it. Sometimes you'll have thin walls, but usually you'll be able to just clamp on it, get after it. Same thing, loosen up, finish it, and produce perfect parts consistently. So when it comes to my experience, I will tell you honestly, once I learned how to machine Inconel and plastic, I've had more trouble with plastic than Inconel. Now machining titanium, Inconel, Monel, I love those challenges, I love getting after it, but machining plastic to crazy tight tolerances in production it is an absolute different beast and you gotta stay on top of it or you will scrap parts. All right, boom, that is the end of this video. If you guys love what we're throwing down, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, put the comments down below. What do you guys think? Do you think that plastic is harder or easier than machining in canal? Love to hear your thoughts and comments down below. Boom.